<clears throat> Hi, good afternoon. This is July 6th, I think, pretty sure, yeah. Today's Wednesday. I did my run this morning, three miles, and then I walked a mile over at the gym. I was going to go to the beach. I may st still, it's 2 o'clock now, though. Um, I'm letting my hair grow. It has nothing to do with 40 years ago, but I'm letting it grow because it saves 18 a month. I um, took out the variance in my insurance, my car insurance, so that it's um, only twice a year rather than monthly. So that was like an eight or nine dollar fee per month. Of course, the driver's school um, education, defensive driver's course is five a month. I went to a lesser grocery store, which is saving me approximately 16 a week. I gave up soda pop. You know, diet orange, diet grape, diet, well, not grape, lemon lime, fresca type drinks, Sprite type drinks, which I've given up all forms of artificial sweetener. But that's saving me 16 a month because I would buy four two liter bottles, three to four, which was uh, apparently like 24, 2500 um, MGs of artificial sweetener. So I gave that up. I gave up coffee and caffeine six, seven months ago. It's seven months on my hair too, by the way. So it's just kind of growing. It has nothing to do. It's sort of my own little revolution, you know. Um, anyway, I was going to go to part two. So I've described the ride. Let me describe the vehicle I walked up on. It appeared to have a tan tag with black lettering but in reality may have been a very dark green. There were about six numbers and letters and it had a black border around it. The man, um, years later someone said, well, what did he look like? And I said, he looks like a young, young Rob Lowe. He looked like Rob Lowe. This part of his face was definitely like Rob Lowe. The lips, the nose, the thing. When he held the gun, he had a very thin wrist. Um, there were watches. I must have left in the living room anyway. Um, so I may go to the beach because, I mean, it's going to be sunny till about 8 o'clock. I wanted to do some, you know, I was supposed to pick up, but it was like you'd had to get up at 4 a.m. to be out there by 7. On And I had already done the fun run. So, and I'm on a diet now. I've ordered a journal and some stationery from eBay. Um, that way, once a week, I'll write my doctor. This is the easiest way to do it. And so I weigh in. You keep a book. July, 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 August, 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 September, 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 October, October, October. And once a week you weigh in. If you've gone up or down or wherever you're staying the same, then you know you've got to modify your diet. It's 12 to 1500. I also am fasting because um, I'm subject to ulcers. So what I'm doing now is after 6 o'clock in the evening, I don't eat again until 6 a.m. I do have a big glass of water, and I'm not opposed to something like uh, a little bit of orange juice, you know, diluted. Um, and then at noon, after my exercise routine and stuff, I, you know, I have my, um, thing. Anyway, so, I'm up there. I have photographs. I have the diary. Let me get the diary. My mom had gotten this at Grant's or Woolworth's. And on, oh, I don't have my glasses on. But anyway, I wrote in here on the wrong day because I was like, get smart. I wanted to be, you know, so I wish, you know. But there's a long period here. And so anyway, I go up to Debbie's and Kathleen's. Oh, here it is. I have it marked here. Oh, I put the ones where I put reference to it because I felt like I had civil rights and I can write. But anyway, I went up to Kathleen's, and there was a wisteria, we called it the bee tree, on the corner of their porch. And as happenstance would have it, when I'm showing Kathleen about the events of the ride, that this nice-looking guy picked us up and displayed a gun and all that, um, Debbie was there. And she goes, you can't write it in your diary. Your mom will read your diary. We'll get in big trouble. We hitchhike, and he displayed a gun. So... I was more or less forced to rip the page out. It was June 17th. It wasn't the right day. I had moved it ahead thinking, well, you know, if my mom does look at it, she can't look that far ahead. This is the mind of a 12-year-old, not a very bright one at that. 
So I ripped the two pages, a page and a half out, and I stuffed it into this fence post where they had gotten a chain link fence. And Mrs. Sexton Hogue, Debbie's mom, had decided to raise German Shepherds. And they were somehow related to Ren, Ren Tin Tin. So, um, yeah, they were somehow related to Ren Tin Tin. So she had a fence installed, a chain link fence. And the cap wasn't on that one, and I stuffed it down there. I wondered if it's still down there. there. There is a chain link fence between the two houses still. But anyway, but in there, I sent this to a forensic document specialist, and we're not able to make much out of it. I can read bright red college talking to, and there's a long section where I think it says Theodore Bundy. I swear to God, I think it does. Let me see if I get my glasses on for a moment. Right, All right, July, June 17th, which is not a correct day, I know that, from analysis. Okay, me and Debbie went to school for a summer van and thumbed a ride, but we ran away when they stopped. I tried vodka, okay, not good, but there is, oh, you can't read any of this in this light. But there is a section that looks like TH, then there's a long section, then there's what looks like a B. I can't read it. See, because it was ripped out. Okay, all right. So anyway, I walk across to the, to the red clay and Debbie's talking to the sky and it's a red Volkswagen. I think there was like a little r black running board. Um, it had out of state tag, which I knew was an out of state tag because that's what you do when you travel, when you go to Memphis or when you go to Philadelphia or when you go to Daytona you, and you're on these long trips, they say, see how many four out of state tags you can see, see how many cows in the pastures you can see. So looking for tags with just something, they used to have Burma signs, get a Burma shave or something or, or um, next up Stucky's uh, souvenirs and pecan logs or whatever. So anyway, I went across there and I went over to Kathleen's and I showed her the diary and Debbie insisted it be ripped out and that's it. That was it. As time went by, um, we grew apart a little bit. So I was driving at 15, but I wasn't driving at 14. So I'm going to assume sometime in 68, um, we went, Debbie came over in a pastel colored bicycle. I can't say if it was light pink or if it was light um, you know, green, Hudson green, or, you know, railroad car green. It might have been that green. It had a wicker basket, well, probably plastic even then, but a little basket. And she had come, and we're going to, she asked, we're going to ride up to um, the Riviera Apartments. So a very odd place, right? Because nobody rode on land. You can ask anybody in the 60s, 70s, 80s if landing was a good place to ride a bike. No. Even then, it was a major thoroughfare, so we didn't ride our bikes on landing. But she says, can you go with me? And then she had three pieces of notebook paper. Let me get it, so I'll show you what it looks like. Just so you can have the feeling. So she says, we've got to go up to Riviera Apartments. And she had to stop by my house to put air in her tires. Now, the bicycle I used, and I probably was still using it right up through 10th grade. Because in 11th grade, I had my license, and I drove a 63 Chevy Bel Air, white. Um, that was the car I could use. But until then, I rode a Western Flyer blue metallic bicycle. And she came up, and I think she, we needed to put air in her tires. And after that, somehow we got on bland, and we rode and rode. And there's two, they were built in 1966, by the way, and that wasn't far from the school either. So if he was involved in construction, how did he get an apartment there? I don't know it was the same guy. Because remember, all I saw of him was his head, his chest, his knees, his knobbly little knees. He, and he started acting kid-like. After, after we started talking again, he started acting like one of us. We were 12 years old. Instead of acting like a 20 or 22-year-old man, he started acting like, hey, you know, but like one of the kids. I said, okay, like Gregory or something, you know. He had knobbly knees. Um, I don't think I saw his shoes. The steering wheel was white. The steering wheel was larger than the steering wheels are today, and it had three knobs along the bottom, like knobs. And um, there was a deutsche looking thing in the center, and then there was a stick shift. I can't remember the dashboard. I don't know if it was red or was tan. I 
can't remember that. It seemed like there was a lot of circles. And it seemed like there might have been a piece of chrome. I've never been in a Volkswagen. Only other Volkswagen was Sharon Capel's father, who was with the um, Southern Law Poverty Center in, out of Lake City, Mr. Capel. Um, and they moved to Lake City, and I visited Sharon there a couple times, and she came back, and, you know, and I spent a few, like two weeks of summer there. I learned to enjoy uh, Navy bean and ham sandwiches. I thought they, oh, they must be real poor. He's a preacher, you know. But anyway, so that the, he had a Volkswagen in 1963, and it was like a tan Volkswagen. And one time, Cynthia, the older sister, was across a river, and she had an album called The Platters. And she had had a sleepover across the river, and Mr. Capel drove us over there in that small Volkswagen. That's the only other Volkswagen I've ever ridden in, and I don't remember. I do remember there was a Ku Klux Klan over in the south side somewhere doing something. And this was really early because it was like a 63 Volkswagen, so this was early on. I don't know. And they had red ban uh, banners, um, red barricades. Now they're yellow and black, but they were red, and, and these guys were dressed as Klan members. And I said, oh, hell. And Mr. Capel said something and said, you have to be careful of the politics of today or something. And I, I took it in. I had all the JFK albums, Ask Not What Your Country. I had all of that because my father was born in 1918. And I think JFK was born in 1917. They both were the Navy. We have similar names. Um, Bobby, my Aunt Bobby, my Uncle Jerry, you know, all that. So anyway. That's a whole different thing. But, um, yeah, I, I kind of did. I thought, well, he can make it, and, you know, who knows what he can be. So now we'll go back to 67, and I went over there, and I and Debbie said, no, you can't keep it. So a year or so later, maybe a year and a half, she came and had this Dear John letter, I assume for Vicki or Jeannie, her older sisters. Her older sister looked like a young Rita Marino. Her mom, and you'll have to look this up, look up photographs of Elizabeth Taylor. Her mom was a maitre d' at the heart of Jacksonville, a motel downtown with a big red heart, and she played the organ, and she would play the pop hits like um, Yesterday, do, 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 do. she had played the organ, and she also was a maitre d', but it wasn't enough to support three daughters and herself. Her older sister, Jeannie, her, I'm sorry, the older daughter, Debbie's older sister, Jeannie, was 18 or 19 that year, in 1967, and I don't know if she might be a stepsister. I couldn't say. Because she had the dark hair. And Vicki and Jeannie looked more like um, Elizabeth Montgomery, Vicki, and Debbie Julie London. Something like that. They had sort of, you know, honey-colored hair. But still the brown eyes, I think. And, um, I mean, yeah. Be Jeannie was beautiful. But at some point she became pregnant. In fact. And um, she had a picture, uh, an album by Barbara Strauss and Call Me Babs. It was kind of a chartreuse, a, a purpley album that said Call Me Babs or something. People who love people, you know, that's kind of... And Jean had uh, the mom, Jean and Jeannie. And I wondered, doing the math, if Mrs. Ho was born in 1930 and Jeannie was born in 1947, that's only 17, so maybe she wasn't married to the commander yet, you know, so... Maybe Jeannie was a half-sister. I don't know. So anyway, I may still go to the beach. I don't know. <sighs> okay, we were, okay, so Debbie had come with her bicycle, and we're going up landing, and we go to this apartment. There's two apartments. Here's a Riviera. Then there's a little piece of subdivision, a couple blocks, and then there's another Riviera. It was the second one. I did my video about a year or so ago. It's actually further on, almost to Park Street, US 17. Um, near 17 any blanding in 21 17. it was far end so we drive and we finally get there our bikes are unlocked and we had to go upstairs that's a little dark thing up 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 the, the rivieras were colored pastel then and they had like like um orange sickle and, and light blue and light green and and then i think there were a couple raw and we had to go up and downstairs for some reason in my mind i say tans and pastels i don't remember the cars that were parked there we went upstairs and there was a guy, and I could not say if he was the same guy. And he was wearing like corduroy bell bottoms and either a white t-shirt or a white turtleneck. And his hair was here, which is in 68, everybody didn't have long hair, but they did. They were starting to have beetle-like hair right about here, and it was wavy. And he looked sort of like Michael Nesmith of the Monkees or something like that. But he was slender, and I think I said, 
can I get some water? And I started walking towards the refrigerator and he said something, no, you can't, don't open the refrigerator, you know. And there was um, a plate glass window looking out in the courtyard and that's where his kitchenette was. And I don't remember if Debbie handed him these notes, you know, oh, here's something for my sisters, bye-bye. And so he's popping around the room and he's smiling, like maybe he was on something, I don't know. There was a shag carpet and um, there was an unmade bed to the corner and we weren't allowed to go that hall, we weren't allowed to go that hall, just stay in this main little living room area with the kitchenette. And the kitchenette had a like knotty pint island and there was a surfboard shaped oval, long oval for Michael white topped, white top on the top. I guess it was like, I don't know if it had a sink or anything like that built into it. I, I don't think, it might have, but it was in the center and then on top of it, there was a bicycle wheel hanging from, I guess it had a, a cross beam in the building. I didn't look that high, but there was a bicycle hanging and it had spatulas and large, you know, ladles and things hanging from this bicycle wheel. And I'd never seen that before and I've never seen it again. The person that was there was slender, tan bell bottoms, possibly a white turtleneck. I got a creepy feeling. I kept thinking my bike is downstairs. It's unlocked. Our bikes are down. We need to go. You've given him a Dear John letter. He hasn't read it yet. Let's go. Obviously, it's a Dear John letter. So there was that. That's it. Now, you go on through your life. Debbie gets an accelerated program, wants to get out of high school. I'm puddling along, glad to make it out of high school. Joined the track team, did the 440. Um, you know, not very good, but I brought my points in. We had very good coach. We had a very good coach. I, I'll tell you that. We had a couple of good coaches. We did all the pre-exercises. We did our laps. We did cross country. We did, you know, we did stretches. We did everything. If you could only bring in three points, you better bring in your three points. If you're bringing in 15, 20 points and, and, and you know, you do the long jump or you do the Australian curl jump or whatever you're doing, we came in second in the county. And that's saying a lot. Because we were predominantly a, a white school at that time, Forest High School. And there were Reigns and Reebok. Theoretically, it should have been Reigns, Reebok, who knows. But we came in second. And I was very proud that we came in second in the county, you know, because we were a team. Well, this, is, this goes on my Jaguar rant. Because we were a team. And you, if you could only bring in three points, you better bring in your three points. Do everything you can to bring in whatever points you can. Anyway. Um, so life went on. I did this, I did that, I muddled this, I muddled that. I worked at Blue Cross. Um, I started school, stopped school, whatever. I did all kind of stuff. I finally got an associate in arts, majoring in criminal justice, associates in science, 79, majoring in criminal justice, and then um, a bachelor of arts, majoring in criminal justice, and associate in science accounting. Two honorable discharges, Florida Army National Guard and Army Reserves. I'd always had my sporadic anti-establishmentarianism. I never smoked, I never drank much. Anyway, so I had my try, I left JSO, heartbroken. I had a, if time had been just a little different, I had the stupid crush on a man and I wouldn't let it go. I became a little bit too obsessed with it and, and, and it ended up, I said, okay, I'm leaving JSO. I've, I've got to, it's one thing or another, you know, body bags and, and, and children with Levi's beat into their, you know, just different things. And people huffing gasoline and children from Lake Butler coming that looked, never seen sunlight, God knows how they live, dirty sheets, never knew what clean sheets were. And I said, you know what, that's okay. I did do the suicide hotline for a few months with Bonnie Jacobs, but that's another story. So I'm on the outside and I'm finding jobs. I'm putting in for all these civil service jobs that were more, uh, you know, I knew I was a good, uh, good administrator. So I took all these different tests, and finally I got to be a pool clerk at IRS, and I was there for 37 years. Started as a three, ended up as a GS7, step 10. Not bad. And I helped 29 years uh, with volunteer tax assistance. Every year taking the course in learning. In accounting, I did pretty good, 2.9 or something. Pretty good for me, because um, I'm kind of scattered brain. And I've taken the autism thing and said I'm on this, one of the, I'm in the sphere. And I've taken the test like three times. I did never like noises as a child, you know, I liked it. But anyway, I'm going off topic, I'm sorry. So we go up there and she gives him the letter and that's it. 
And then now it's 1978, and I'm on the skids at JSO, and, you know, it's okay. I'm, I'm working my, I'm working at, what was I, about 25, 24, 24. And all this stuff breaks loose in, in Tallahassee, and they printed, my parents always got the newspaper, and they printed that newspaper, and I see this guy. And I said, oh, my God, that is the freak that we rode with way back in 1967. I actually got out and ran around the block to Alding to, to my godmother, Mrs. Davis, Sue Davis. And she goes, you know, ooh, ooh. But nobody, there was no, it was kind of like anticlimactic. I said, well, maybe because I'm having so many troubles. I said, but isn't this something else? He had Debbie's phone number. I was thinking real hard doing the dishes the other day. Maybe he said something along this line. I was on spring break. I'm going to be in Stanford taking law courses, but I was robbed. And they took my wallet and they took my money and I'm stranded here. I'm trying to do day labor at Confederate Point. And I've got to get back to Palo Alto. And, and this is my story. I wanted to scare Debbie and Mary. I wanted to scare them because of what happened to me. And they didn't know the trunk was a trunk and the and the engine with the engine, so my stuff, my luggage was still in there. They didn't get that. They did get my some of my stuff out of my wallet. And he told them some jive-ass story, and they believed it, and they said, oh, here's this handsome guy who's been robbed in Daytona. He made his way up here. He's just trying to get funds to work his way back to San Francisco, which on June 5th, 6th, 7th, he didn't have to be there till the 24th. Some of this is speculation because nobody ever told me. Kathleen doesn't want to get involved. Debbie says, don't obsess about something that happened 53 years ago. That happened. I mean, it happened. And it's like, where's Mr. Hagmeyer? He was here in Jack's. And another thing about Debbie, she knew what the sheriff's son was doing. The sheriff's son didn't go to our high school. She said, oh, he's already sleeping with his girlfriend, Kathy, over over there off of um, Fishware. And I'm thinking, how do you know what the sher the maid said? But how do you know the maid? Do you know Kathy? Does Kathy go to our school and, and Dale Carson goes somewhere else? Why do you know stuff what the police people are doing? You know? So, I don't know. I don't know. But I would like the answer. I've never seen anybody hanging utensils with a bicycle wheel. There were 10 speed clubs. It was a big thing back in the 70s. So, you know, lined, you know, roller skating, 10 speed club. I went to Little Talbert on a 10 speed bicycle with a group of people from Ed White High School. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, this is part two. Um, like I said, I ran to my Mrs. Davis I said, Mrs. Davis, you know, they must have posted the, the poster. And when you've been around somebody 12 or 15 minutes, you don't forget. But what gets me is I never knew that there may have been. There was another thing I noticed, like in my early 19 or 20, Debbie was going to go to Austria. Maybe I wasn't even out of high school. Maybe it, was like, maybe it was like 10th grade. Or maybe it was right out of high school. But I think she was going to get college, credit, college credits for going to Austria. Her father was going to let her and the middle sister go to Austria for a semester to get some credits, and she needed to learn how to ski. So, you know, I don't know. So it's all right there, but it's like, it's like you're trying to touch a ghost or something, you know? Anyway, this is part two. Thank you.